Today I'm doing a get ready with me and a first impressions of two Estee Lauder products. One is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude Cushion Stick Radiant um, Makeup, which I don't know if you've been checking my Instagram out, but I talked about this when I first saw it advertised in one of my fashion magazines. And I was like, you know, amazed because they comp combined two of the big trends this year which was stick foundation and the cushion makeup and they combined it into one formula so I thought that, that was neat and I wanted to try it and I did and this shade is in honey bronze but the number shade is 4W1 so if you're around my complexion that's the shade that you look for and I matched it up with the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place Powder Makeup now this one is a twofer you can either um, use it as a powder foundation, or you can use and it as I also powder. used um, an Estee Lauder Pure Color Envy Sculpting Eyeshadow Palette, which is full of, you know, the fall shades that they say are good. This is more of a neutral palette, and, and you can make up your own mind about whether or not you want to spend your money to buy it. With me, I would buy this again. You know, it does have some cons to it, and you'll find out in the as you watch the video, but overall, I like it. And this, I like too, and I think this will be something that I would wear, not so much as a setting powder anymore, but I would probably wear this on days if I'm just going to um, keep it pretty minimal. Minimal, you know, if I'm not trying to cover up my flaws and everything, I'm just going to let everything, you know, hang out, but I still want to have a little bit of coverage. You know, if I wanted to wear, like, blush or anything like that. So, to me, they're good investments, but I'll let you be the judge after you see how it works. But this is the finished product, and I'll put pictures up on Instagram later and probably on the Facebook page as well. So you guys can see, but now, on to the video. I'm using my Studio Gear Prime Objective Primer that I told you guys about a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I'm muting. I'll put a little bit of this underneath my eyes. Says I gotta twist. Oop, I think I twisted too much. What'd you see? Color comes out like that. I'm not gonna do like I do with most of my makeup. I'm gonna dot it around.
Okay, I can tell you right now, and I don't like trying to blend with this tip. This tip is not good at all for blending. So, like if you're on the go and and unlike me, you don't have a lot of dark areas that you got to cover up and stuff, this is good for just doing touch-ups. This is good for just doing touch-ups. And, um, it's not good for applying makeup to cover up any anything. Not really. It doesn't have enough coverage on it, you know, for that. But it's good for a quick touch-up. And if you're doing this to apply as a full base, you will need to use, you know, probably a stippling brush or a blending sponge to really get this to work right. So if you use the tip of this, if you did any color correcting work beforehand, it's going to wipe it completely off and smear it in and it's going to look like you did nothing like right here. It looks like I did nothing beforehand. So I would say if you have a pretty clear complexion with only like a few minor blemishes, using this, you know, the way that you're supposed to, but putting it on and using the tip to blend, it will work out great for you. But if you're like me, you got areas that you need to color correct. It's not going to do a damn thing for those, so you're going to have to still get out, you know, your stippling brush or your, or your blending sponge to really get into those areas. So now i got to see if I can do any additional work to try and get these areas under control now, so... color envy sculpting eyeshadow excuse me and it has eight colors in it um and for my base i'm going to be using ivory power for my base
And I always like to use a base because the base helps to give an even color. Because even if you can still see your own skin pigmentation through it, it helps to set the tone I'm going to build up that easy with fiery saffron, which is this color right here up top. I'm going to start at the inner corner and go up. And you notice I have pitted eyes, so when I do this, I'm not going to go completely all the way over. Sometimes I do, but lately I've been more into the lifted look because I have a fleshy fold on my eyelid, so it really comes down. And you really have a hard time seeing any Pretty color on the lid. Brown. And what I'm doing with this, I'm going above the crease with it. Let me see, I'm going like this. I'm doing my own little guide work here with that. So I don't want to bring it down. Okay, now I'm going to go over that with rubble metal. And actually, I don't think I'm going to go over that with rubble metal. What I think I'm going to do is take rubber metal and go into that outer corner, that outer edge here. And what you'll see me doing is painting down with that. Paint down so I can give myself that color guide. And then taking the brush and then going out to it, you know, to meet it. Here's Rania. Mm. I think I am yeah, going to go into the smoky palette now for this, for the crease work, like going into that actual crease area. And also I'm using it for because we got the best little smudge brush in here. This is saving me from having to go into my actual <laughs> makeup case. And I'm using Black Market. I don't want to use black market or dagger. Hmm. Hmm, I'm not sure. I'm gonna look at these colors again. I think black market might be too much for it. I'm gonna use dagger. Excuse me, you don't hear me burping a lot because I don't know why I'm burping. But I just, um. Uh... 
And the thing I love about doing the crease work for me, especially when you got hooded eyes, is that, <laughs> especially, especially hooded eyes like I got, you do not have to be Precise. precise with it. Fluffy part from the brush that comes with the, with the smoky palette. Now it's time for me to buff. You see what I mean by you don't have to be as precise because this, this side isn't blended, but this side is. And so once you blend it in, it makes it more beautiful. And with me, I like having um, my colors blend in together where you still see where the colors transition. You know, we got one shade and one shade here, one shade there, but you don't see like a harsh line of definition. They're blended into each other, almost kind of like a rainbow where you see like the colors gradually go into the next one. That's how I like for my makeup to look. Now, typically, this is where I would use a light color, you know, to put in there, but right now I'm going to use a light, I mean, not a light, a dark color. But a dark color that has a lot of shimmer to it to bring some light reflecting properties in. And I'm using the Captivating Cocoa for that. And I'm patting it onto my lid. Now sometimes when I do this type of lid work, I don't always go all over the lid. I concentrate more on the center. So I don't know how well you can see this, but. I concentrate mostly on the center. And then I bring it out a little bit into the rest of that lid part. And one thing I do do because I have that really fleshy fold on my hooded eyes, I go up more with that light shimmery shade and I actually take it up into that crease. And it's real important that you do this part after you blend out the rest of the shadows. And trust me, this isn't going to look like it's a paint by numbers type of thing either where you're going to see the harsh edges these lighter shimmery powders when you put them on top of those darker ranges they tend to blend with them automatically I don't know why they just do but as long as you use a shade that complements the other ones now if I did like a orange bright orange neon orange or neon green with this then I will have to do more blending because, yeah, you would see a sharp line. But because I'm using colors from the same palette and these colors actually go together, because you can even see right here, like if you use your color, obviously use your color eye with it, you can see how these colors transition into each other. And that's one of the good things about using a palette. But you're going to keep this smoky. Yeah, yeah I'm going to keep this smoky. And since I'm keeping it smoky, I'm gonna go back to the smoky palette. <laughs> okay, and for this, I'm gonna use the shade Smolder. And I'm using this smudging brush for that. And I'm gonna use Smolder to finish off the smoky look on the under eye area
I'm going to bring this up. A little bit. And don't worry. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning with concealer later too. You see how I got that smoked out look there? <laughs> powder makeup now with this you can use it two ways you can use it as either a powder foundation or you can use it as a um, setting powder and it has two sides to this thing but I never use the applicators really that come with products my purpose for this today is to use it as a finishing powder to help even things it's also part of my you know last buffing step mm. so I'm using my retractable kabuki brush so Excuse me, eco tools. Eco tools. I'm gonna do it just right there. And this is in the same shade as that foundation, the honey bronze. Thank you. 